Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen, here with Alex King and Daniel Mangana. Today is Tuesday, June the 16th, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time, and wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And we're very happy because we have a fourth today. We have a special guest that our good friend Dan has brought along to tell us about something called Heart speak, which is going to be really interesting. But Daniel, you know a whole lot about a whole lot more about heart speak than I do, and a whole lot more about our guest. So I'm going to let you do the introductions. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really honoured to be able to share with all of our listeners today my beloved friend, Dr. Ann Jensen. Um, Dr. Ann just she's wonderful. Uh, she really cares, and her tool really, really has been supporting my community. Um, myself, uh, my clients, it's, it's really, really powerful stuff. Uh, her grasp on feelings and emotions and how we can really maximize our life experience by stepping into our agency around them but in a way that's really nourishing and self caring and not beating yourself up. I think it's just great. And what better place to bring, uh, Dr. And in somewhere where we, we endeavor to give people the daily dose of happy and, um, I'm really happy that she could be with us. That's great. So, and thank you for joining us on the program at six o'clock in the morning because Dr. Jensen lives in Australia. She woke up this morning to do this show. So thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure. It's great to be here. Nice to meet you all. So you got to tell us what HeartSpeak is. Daniel's given us quite a bit of a taste of it, but we don't really have a clear idea yet. So tell us what HeartSpeak is. Well, I'm pretty lucky. I get to actually help people who are suffering with physical or emotional pain. And I help them transmute it, self-sabotaging emotions to self-empowering emotions mm-hmm. with, for lasting relief. These, these changes are lasting. So, Sounds pretty good. Um, okay. Well, certainly that's something a lot of people need, particularly um, listeners of ours who are Conscious creators always working on keeping their vibe up. That's an important piece. You got to be in that good emotional space. So if you got stuff in the way, it's nice to have a way to get out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing this? No, well, pretty much all my life. But professionally, I've been teaching Heart Speak for six years, doing Heart Speak, and then what developed into Heart Speak for 15, 16 years. Wow. So you must have quite a uh, a list of uh, successes and testimonials and all that that kind of reinforce, yeah, I'm on the right track here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty blessed, yeah. <laughs> I wish you could, all could be a fly on my wall sometimes and see the changes in people. They're just profound. Daniel talks that, about that quite a bit, too, because he works with clients, and, and you, you can always see it. All of my co-hosts, most of them anyway, are coaches or, you know, therapists or that kind of thing. And whenever they talk about helping a client, especially when I'm looking at them on video, you can just see the eyes get a little bit more dilated, a little bit more excited and so forth because of exactly that. Yeah. And I like to imagine that's what we're doing here too. I mean, I know what we do because we get good feedback as well, but uh, we just don't get to see it as directly as that fly on the wall gets to see it. (laughs) So what can you tell us more about it? Tell us, tell us how does, how does this whole thing work? Right. So, you know, those times when you get, you get triggered, something happens and you get triggered into an emotional reaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, heart speak has a way of softening that trigger. And so your next time you meet that situation, you're less likely to be triggered in that way. But it actually goes deeper than that. Um, all, all of this is non-conscious. You don't even know you're being triggered and all of a sudden you're having some sort of a reaction whether it's a feeling reaction, you get upset or frustrated or sad, or it could be a physical reaction, you break out into a rash or your, your tummy gets upset or you know you, have, you get a headache, or it could be a behavioral reaction. You, you do something you normally wouldn't do, maybe go to your, one of your compulsions or addictions. And um, yeah, so heart speak can actually stop the trigger stop you from being triggered in my perfect world I always say that in my perfect world I think that 
the universe could throw anything at us and we choose how we react instead of going into an automatic reaction. And Daniel, you've seen uh, the results of her work directly through the people that you've referred to and so forth. How, what's been your perspective on it? Well, I've, even in my own life as well, right? Um, even dealing with COVID. So for example, one of my, one of my mentors was mentioning the other day, she was like, oh, I'm in awe of how you've, you've always been just upbeat and you've actually not been down. It's like, yeah, because I understand that I can have a feeling and it doesn't have to become a dominating emotion. It could be something that I can feel. So I can have a feeling of anxiety, allow it to be what it is, which is just a signal. And then I can pivot into whether it's through changing my physiology or changing my breathing, changing like whatever. I can go through the heart speak life, the heart speak process and actually step into an emotion that I choose that actually befits what I want from the situation versus being a slave to the impulsive re response to, to the situation, the, to the um, it Sounds the pretty powerful. So I don't know about you, Alex. I, I want to learn more about this. I sure do. So okay. teach us, teach us. Yeah. Um, how about show you, show you. Okay. I like yeah. that too. That sounds like yeah. fun. Yeah. So, so pick something in your world. Oh, this is a really profound one. It, it, um, th this is really easy. It's a physical manifestation of stress. You could have some neck stiffness or tightness. This is just one example of how hard speaking works. So turn your head right and left. Even if you're watching um, later, you can do this and it will work. And usually one side is res more restricted than the other. Would you say that? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Alex is so um, relaxed that, I mean, she could, she could spin yeah, around 180 degrees and wouldn't know the difference. So, you know. I didn't know this so much, in, but you can feel it within yourself. Okay. So touch your neck where you feel the restriction is the most. Just put your, pop your hand on there. Yeah. Okay, great. And we're just going to, there is some stress related to that. So you can take your hands away now. All right, we'll launch in. So let's, we're just going to pick one feeling out to see if we can shift that energy, which will shift the restriction. All right, so okay. it's really motion and urge of resistance. So in Heart Speak, we use feelings, words that represent feelings like fear, anger, and sadness. But sometimes we use words that aren't traditionally represented by feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, and pull is one of those words. And, but we can turn it into a feeling. So the feeling of pull is no. It's a drawing in. It's a contraction. It's a no. It's digging in your heels. It's holding on for dear life. It's not wanting things to change, not wanting to let go. And you don't even have to know what you're holding on to. What, all you have to do is feel that no. Can you feel that no within you? Mm -hmm. So next, what we're going to do is um, we're going to go into the clearing phase. And... In the heart speak clearing, you feel the pull until you feel the no until it's you're ready to let go. And I'll walk you through it. So what we're going to do is you're going to close your eyes. Just come forward a bit and hold on with your hands or your arms. Hold on tight and look for that no feeling, that no, that no, I don't want to let go. I don't want to let go. You're digging your heels, be stubborn. Get your whole body involved. Hold on as tight as you can. Hold on even tighter. Really exaggerate this no. Yes. And then let's sit up with your eyes closed, head back, shoulders back, chest out. Really open up your posture. Whatever it was you were holding on to, now let it go. Not only let it go, but feel it go. Feel it melt from every cell of your body, from every corner of your mind. Just feel it go. And when it's gone, there's a lovely sense of freedom waiting to come in. When it's gone, then invite freedom in and feel free for a moment. Be free. And when you feel ready, open your eyes. Okay, and then turn right and left again and tell me what you noticed. Oh my, it does go farther, doesn't it? <laughs> wow, especially to the left. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's I I noticed that in you, Walt. You had a big restriction there to the left. Yeah. Yeah, I still feel a restriction on the right, but the left is cleared substantially. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a that the theory is that uh, we don't know where memory, long term memory, resides, and. Long t- there's two parts of long-term memory. There's explicit memory and implicit memory. Explicit memory is the facts around the memory. Sure. Yep, I was seven, I fell off a bike, had to go to the hospital, broke my arm, blah, 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 blah. Th- there's always going to be an implicit memory as well, which are the feeling part of the memory. So usually if, it, if a memory is big enough, it usually has both before it gets stored into long-term memory. And we don't know where long-term memory is stored, but I think, especially the implicit memory, the feelings, I think they are actually, that's energy. And energy gets can stored, we, we think it's in the fascia. There's no actual proof of that yet, but we think that it's in the fascia. And by releasing that note, releasing that pull, which was stored, you actually can um, get some more movement. But that's not just, it's not just a physical thing. You can, you can be triggered into reacting in certain ways. And, and you know, everyone's got those. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just show you one more, um, sure. one more use. Everyone has painful memories. A painful memory, I think, is something that you, when you bring to mind, you don't feel so good. You feel bad. Mm-hmm. It still hurts or it's still, there's still some sort of reaction. And if you're like most people, you have a few of those up the way. Sure. Choose, let's choose one thing. And again, if you're watching from home, you can play along as well. So choose okay. one, one painful memory and sit with it for a moment. Bring it to mind and, and feel it. And on a zero to 10 scale, zero meaning it, it doesn't bother me at all. 10 is, wow, it's really really bothering me the most ever just get that number in your mind just uh you don't have to share it just that's just for you all right and then what we're going to try to do is we're going to pick that apart a bit and see if you can you can make that memory a bit softer for you all right bring your memories to mind and it's related to an emotion so these are the normal emotions so we have fear anger Okay, we all know what anger is, but the thing with anger is we get really good at not feeling it, and suppressing it, repressing it. So I'm going to ask you to give yourself permission, give yourselves permission to feel this anger. Okay, and remember, anger is a big spectrum of feelings. It can be anything from, you know, a bit annoyed to irritated to frustrated, all the way up to enraged. Right? So it's going to be in that spectrum somewhere. Okay. So in this case, to clear an anger, we're going to put our hands and fists. We're going to make an angry face, which is a scowl. <clears throat> you can grunt if you want. <laughs> hands and fists, close your eyes, and let's go into the clearing part. So feel this anger. Really, really exaggerate this anger. In fact, make it bigger and bolder than it actually might be. As big as you can, make it physical, feel it in your body, feel it in your muscles, in your face. When it diminishes, take a moment and bring it back. And when it subsides, when it seems like it goes away, when it dissolves, just relax your hands and I'll say what to do then. And then start looking for joy on the inside. Start looking for joy in your heart space. Just that little flutter of joy. You don't have to be about anything. It's just joy. And enjoy joy for a moment. Let your heart dance for a moment before opening your eyes. And bring your mind back to the feeling that was painful, the memory that was painful. And sit with it again. 
and try to become upset with upset about it. You're laughing, Walt. How does that feel? How does that feel now? Well, it, <laughs> when, when you were asking to have us reach for a, an event that was a, a very powerful, angry event, I kept thinking about different events that I'd already worked on clearing to a degree. And I was thinking, okay, what one can I grab that I know is going to, I'm going to feel it right now. <laughs> and I thought of what had happened recently and I've done a pretty good job of clearing it. I thought, and I was kind of able to bring it back, but not totally. So I'm not sure I'm really a good test subject this particular time around because <laughs> I kept reaching for ones I'd already cleared out. <laughs> what about you? Um, how about you guys? Alex, what did, where, where'd you get with it? Alex, did you? I got nothing. I you got nothing to do it. <laughs> I was like, where do I go? I've been here for 36 years. It's got to be something. <laughs> but I, I had already taken care of everything. So. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Well, it shows yeah. the kind of, uh, of audience we're dealing with here because we have people who are regularly working on stuff, and that, that makes it a little bit challenging to find something. What I can tell you is I, I kind of um, I started with one, and I skipped to another one. I said, no, those are going to work. Then I went to, so I was kind of like jumping as you were doing it. <laughs> And the one that I went to, again, I said, like I said, it was a recent event. And when you were guiding us through the part where we're, we're you know, getting all tensed up about it and trying to really feel it again, I, it was interesting because, like I said, I kind of already cleared this one. So I'm trying to bring it up and I bring it up a little bit and sink right back down. I bring it up a little bit and sink right back down. I was like, come on, come on, you got to come up here. <laughs> but uh, it, it was an interesting uh, experience to kind of re-clear it because – it showed me there was some stuff that I hadn't totally gotten out. There was some energy that was still there. Mm -hmm. And when you were describing the part where, where, okay, relax, I actually let myself stay tense for a little bit just to try to feel it some more. And then I relaxed and boom, it was like instant relax. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if my situation matches what the typical person out in the world would experience, but that's what I was feeling. <laughs> what were you feeling, Daniel? Were you doing the exercise too? So I, I, I went into the anger and I was like, oh, I'm not going big enough. So I was like, great, my team, they're really getting into it. And then I, I saw myself like dancing when we had the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when are you not dancing? And then, and then, it, then it got really ridiculous. It felt really ridiculous going back to the angry thought. It's like, that's yeah, a bit silly. What's the point, dance right? instead. <laughs> <laughs> dance is dead, bro. Like, that's a, why not dance? That's exactly how this pivot emerged from anger to joy is I felt, I felt silly. I felt ridiculous. Mm. And then I realized, Oh my gosh, this is a joy. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was working with a, a woman who admittedly came to me and said, look, I've been called an angry person. And you know, I might be an angry person, but I'm not really an angry person. I don't want to be an angry person. So can you help me not be an angry person? So anyway, we worked for a few weeks and, um, she called me up walking down the street and she said I'm just walking down the street and all of a sudden I felt joy in my heart and that and that was a testament to her that you know her anger is shifting so yeah that's great what that happens I mean this sounds like a fabulous technique and I can sense it I mean certainly I felt it with the neck and I can see how this is something I, I had never really thought about in the way that you're doing it here because what you're you're doing is kind of what a therapist does or what a life coach does. You you, you bring up that painful thing and and you're actually just physically turning it into the feeling part. They're also tying in, you know, well here's what the story was, the narrative, and so forth. But you're just saying here's what the feeling was, and you're rebuilding that feeling for the purpose of letting it go. Because after you've rebuilt it from afar, so to speak, it doesn't have the same power that it had before. Yeah. You yeah. want to know why I don't go into the story? There's sure. actually a nerve neurological reason yeah and um it again has to do with how memory works long-term memories and okay. when we as i said when we remember when we when an event becomes important enough in our lives it gets stored into long-term memory mm -hmm. and then when we recall it we need it again we recall it and put it from long-term memory into working memory and then we use it or maybe it gets triggered into working memory what in any case it's in working memory and then when we're done with it we store it again but we the wind there's a window of opportunity on the way from working mem working memory into long-term memory where we can change the memory slightly where the memory becomes flexible so flexible. We, yeah so we store it into 
um, long-term memory again where it's slightly different. So we, if we do that over and over again, we, the, the memory that we have in long-term memory is actually nothing like the original memory. Ah. So we know, yeah, we know that memory is inaccurate. It's been right. shown time and, time and again it's been research studies to, that memory is, in, is inaccurate. Right. So therefore the facts, the explicit part of the memory, the facts about the memory are probably inaccurate. So we don't worry about the facts. We just mm -hmm. worry about the feelings. Sure. We try and evoke the feelings as strongly as possible, which will bring up the memory. And then um, when that's resolved, we then pivot to replace that um, memory, that, a preferred memory. Like instead of anger, we, we, we put in joy. It's like taking a bad memory chip out of a computer and putting a preferred memory chip in. It's a kind of a physical take on reframing or yeah. uh, pruning or whatever you want to call it. There are various names that are given to it where you basically take an old memory that you want to reshape into a new memory. It's, it's, it's a physical approach to that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, uh, we all know, for example, um, like law, let's bring in law of attraction because, you know, we've all, we've all, you know, wanted things that like, we want, wanted things to attract in our lives, but somehow never seemed to acquire. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, our friend Joe, Joe Dispenza says you actually have to feel it to right. make it real. So if you can't feel it if, it, if there's stress around feeling it or having it, you won't be able to feel it. So be, there'll be some sort of a block. So um, heart speaking actually help you feel what you want to attract. Mm hmm yeah. yeah I, and I like the fact that you're emphasizing the feelings so heavily. I mean, law of attraction theory tells us that's where all the power is. I mean, the, the attraction part happens on the thought, but the power comes from the emotion. Yes. Right. Yeah. So that makes a whole lot of sense. Very cool. I like this. And very simple. The, the best stuff that I've found anyway in all of this whole topic area is the stuff that breaks down so, so simply. I mean, like with Daniel, for, for me, the, the, the most simplified thing that Daniel has been able to bring to the table and it's wonderful is the idea of micro shifting. So, such a very, very simple little thing. And it's incredibly powerful. And, and this has very much the same kind of thing. Just break it down to what it feels like and really feel it. And just yeah. feel it and feel it until you dispel it. Exactly. And, and if, if anyone's had any trauma, you know, and many of us have, it's, it's really uncomfortable and probably not a good therapeutic approach to ask someone to feel the whole trauma. Mm. But in heart speak, we don't, we're not feeling the whole trauma. We're just feeling the anger now. Mm -hmm. we'll leave the rest. Okay. Once the anger is dealt with, what's next? Okay. Now we can deal with the, the pull feeling. Okay. Okay. That's, and then we just chunk it down like that. So then this whole trauma gets less and manageable. So um, whenever something interesting like this comes up in the show, I've learned to treat it as a situation where it's an indicator that there's someone in the audience who needs to hear it. So you just brought up a very interesting point that there can be a lot of pieces to something. And yeah. I'm imagining there probably are going to be people listening in who have something like that that has gone on and that they may still be you know, haunted by or however you want to describe it. So if – what's that, Daniel? Yeah, that's right. They could be working through it. So if they are, and right now they're they're either doing it themselves or maybe they're working through a coach of, of some kind, how would you recommend to them that they break it up? I mean, you, you kind of started to describe that in terms of, well, here's the anger piece, but give us a better idea. How do you break that up? Right. It, it's, a, it's, as you said, it's a very simple approach. So you don't try to deal with it all at once. You notice one feeling in it. You, you, if you can name that feeling, maybe it's sadness, right? Okay, so I'm just going to deal with the through. sadness, but there's all these other things in here. We're working through it. So I'm just going to deal with the sadness. And then you, and anyone can identify one feeling out of the mix. And then you, I call it going through the sadness tunnel. You just carry on going through it, feeling the sadness, feeling the sadness until it lifts or you emerge from the tunnel. It is a distinct shift. And then you're ready to what we call pivot, which means turn, basically turn your attention from the sadness to something better. 
in Heart Speak, we use peace, but really you can, you can pivot to anything, any lovely feeling, any feeling that feels natural. Which is exactly what Abraham Hicks t- teaches for a law of attraction. You do the pivot. It's the same principle. Actually, that's a really interesting thing that you brought that up because I never listened to Abraham Hicks. Is that right? My, yeah. my friends have. Mm-hmm. And oh, it was a few years ago now. Um, and I'd been teaching heart speak using the word pivot. And I saw someone post on Facebook, uh, Abraham Hicks quote about pivot. You must pivot from negative to positive. Not that I would use negative and positive emotions, but that's the quote. And she said, um, but she said pivot. So I said, oh, pivot. Yeah. She's using pivot. So I emailed her, didn't I? Of course I did. Of course. And um, I got an, a reply. I asked her when she started to use pivot. It was back in the early 90s. Ah. So it was like a collective consciousness thing. I had not heard that before. And so, but I got it from somewhere. There's another example of how that happens too. What's that, Daniel? Yeah, no kidding. That's exactly what that is. Yeah. That is so cool. Have you noticed how much pivot is going around? Everyone's talking about pivoting. Oh my goodness. Right now, especially we're in, I, here in the U.S., I've been calling it the trifecta, the terrible trifecta. We've got the the pandemic, we've got uh, an economic crash, and now we've got racial tensions going on. And so there's a whole lot of opportunity for pivoting going on right about now. <laughs> and it's a challenge for people. So this is an, another good thing to be bringing up in a time like this, uh, another way to deal with, because regardless of how entanglement. intimately connected or mm. distant we feel from those mm. three things, there, there's such big things right now that they, uh, they affect all of us, even when we don't realize that we're being affected by it. Having a tool like this is really quite valuable. We can uh, use HeartSpeak to help that. Talk about that. So what we can do sometimes is what I do is we um, get a group together and um, feel, and this is a personal feeling of the planet's stress or, or, or maybe the country's stress. And everyone has a different level of stress that they're feeling for on behalf of the country. And then we do the HeartSpeak clearing on the country or the planet and everyone in the group says oh that feels better so Mm -hmm. it's something that we can do and and once again tying into what many people are doing in fact daniel is part of a group that that is trying uh is doing various kinds of group healings like that so tying into the group healing thing i mean you're you're connected to how how could you be connected to all this stuff and not be connected to it i don't understand that (laughs) it doesn't seem possible (laughs) But you've been doing it all this time. That's great. Um, where else do you like to use HeartSpeak? I mean, we just described two different scenarios. One where people are dealing with old issues and a second one where there, there's like a collective thing going on. Are there other places to use it? Any play, anytime that, anytime that a, um, anything that's related to a feeling. Um, one thing that pops to mind is I, I've helped children um, with trouble who had trouble walking trouble talking trouble at school Mm. Uh, i just we just make these things easier for them one particular profound um situation was with a little girl i think she was two or almost three at the time but she had she had developmental issues so she wasn't walking and she wasn't talking and she would she was very clingy with mom and uh and she, they came, mom and her came to see me and she, they'd been, you know, everywhere else and, you know, trying to get the little girl to, you know, first of all, be more self-sufficient so she could leave her at daycare and have, you know, kind of a life. She was a single mom. Anyway, um, they came in and again, the, the baby was on the floor. I call her the baby because she was on the floor and, uh, when I work with kids that small, the mother does the clearing on behalf of the child. Anyway, walk mom through a few clearings, mostly on getting the child to take risks, like walk, and also um, not be so like not be so clingy with mom. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we finished that, and then 
while I was working on the mother, the little girl stood up, walked, like crawled over to the chair, stood up, walked down the chair and out the door. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> and started like chatting with some people out in the reception. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That was That's amazing. very cool. I yeah. like that story. Manifestation stories are a favorite around here. I mean, whenever we get one that really, really hits the mark, it's it puts a smile on all of our faces. You just did that. So congratulations. <laughs> That's a great one. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Especially especially since you were doing the work through the mom, which really shows how big that connection is between mother and Definitely. child, especially at a young age like that. That mm -hmm. literally by working with her energy, you are working with her daughter's energy at the same time. We call that surrogate work, and uh, we, especially in the feeling, in, with feelings, it's so, it's so useful because we all share our feelings anyway. We all pick them up. Feelings are contagious, mm. so we can feel each other, feel each other's feelings. In fact, sometimes when I'm working with little ones, you know, they'll be on the floor or just, you know, sitting there in mom's lap, and mom will be clearing or at least feeling a feeling. And then the child would look up at mom like, oh, how did you know? Yeah. Well, clearly the child felt it. Experienced yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. And it really does illustrate it. I mean, I, I, I suspect that most moms know that they have a strong connection. Yes. I wonder, though, if they know they have that much of a strong connection. I mean, do you I'm find that... Is that like news to the to the mom, or is that like, oh yeah, I expected that? Uh, some moms, yes. Yeah. Some moms will expect it. Some moms will um, like it's natural, but some parents, or especially the dads, is, are like, this is crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I suppose it depends on where someone's coming from and the level of like belief that they've got. Absolutely. That's what it really comes down to, I think. Mm -hmm. no, so people are going to be seeing it through the lens of their the stories that they hold. Yeah. So if someone sees, you know, I'm connected, like, then they'll be able to tap into that and they'll be able to accept it and, and believe it. Um, and I think maybe, is it, would you say even, Dr. Ram, that if someone does hold that belief that they can even get better results from it because they can even be more directive and deliberate with the energy? Yeah. Yes. It, it's, it's a, it's, in the better you are, just trust the process and, you know, say, you know, believe that this is going to work, it does. Having said that, I've worked with um, some young, you know, thinking of a particular young man with autism. He uh, wasn't having it. He was just not going to do it. He was really resistant. Anyway, he and his mother worked, had a few sessions and uh, for their relationship. It was a very difficult, tumultuous relationship. And now it's, I just saw mom the other day and it's, it's calm. So mm -hmm. it, yes, even though that you, there might be some resistance, you still can make shifts. Mm -hmm. That's the other word that kept, keeps coming up and you brought it up a number of times so far. And of course it's a, it's a mainstream word where law of attraction is concerned, resistance. We often mm -hmm. become quite, concerned with that because then you know we're trying to manifest something and it doesn't show up and we're told oh well it's because we're resisting in some way i was resisting anything where's my off button on my resistance you know <laughs> but it, as we learn more and more about this we realize yeah there is resistance it's often outside of our visual range outside of our direct awareness and needs to be brought out um and once again you're, you're talking to an audience of people who have done a lot of work along this line anyway so we're a relatively low resistant group compared to most that you're going to be talking to. But even so, we still, all of us deal with resistance on a day to day basis. I mean, that right or wrong, Alex, that's, that's what our conversations are often about here on the show. The little resistances we deal with, right? Big facts, big you know, facts. Little things like that. Mm -hmm. they, they pop up. So having, once again, having that, that awareness and having that tool to get rid of resistance is great. Um, I want to ask you a question though, that I like to ask people who are experts in, in these related fields, see what your take is on it. We often talk about getting rid of resistance. And yet in an LOA conversation, we'll say, well, we don't really want to 
think in terms of getting rid of it. We want to think of it in terms of replacing it with something else. No. What, what do you think of it in terms of, what, what do you replace? Do you think of it that way? First of all, you're nodding up and down. So I think, yes, yes. Exactly. what do you replace it with? What do you replace resistance with? It, it depends on the type of resistance. And from a heart speed perspective, there's several different types of resistances, but you can generally classify them as a pull like we did. A no, a digging in your heels, not wanting things to change. And again, we, these are all non, some of them are non-conscious. So we replace that with a sense of freedom. Okay. And then we replace uh, the push, like, no, get out of my face. That feeling of resistance, like, don't pressure me, get out of my space. Mm -hmm. We replace that with a sense of ease. Oh, okay. Yeah. So freedom and ease. Yeah, those are good. I like those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How important is that, do you think, in, in your experience? I mean, I could point to uh, other LOA type situations, but in your experience with HeartSpeak, how important is it to change the language around to here's what we're going to replace it with instead of here's what we're trying to do? Uh, yeah, th it is important. It's, yeah, the universe doesn't like a void. You know, we don't want to... Um, leave a void so we act something will fill the void so we might as well fill it with something that we want to fill it with mm -hmm. so i choose ease rather than you know more easy. it's a good word i like it you get to choose anything <laughs> why not go for the gusto go for the really good yeah. stuff yeah okay you guys got any questions i'm doing all the questioning here but you guys get to jump You're in really good at doing these like proper grown-up interviews me and alex are here for the completely <laughs> A proper grown-up. Yeah, you do the grown-up. <laughs> we, we provide the comedic <laughs> relief. An occasional, yes. an occasional reference to a film that relates to the situation. Or to Big facts. <laughs> I don't know about you, Dr. Ann. I sense a little resistance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, as well, I mean, I, I, know, I know Dr. Ann. I've done some of her programs and I've explored it and, and done, done some of the work. So, you know... I don't want to. Okay, I want to give you guys the opportunity to to get your get your pound of emotion. Well, it's it, it's fun. <laughs> it's good. I'm liking it to say. Oh, and and uh, I do want to include live streamers because Josie's been uh, asking a couple of questions here for Doctor Ann to answer. So she says, Doctor Ann, what are your thoughts on mental diets? Mental diets. Um, by mental diets, I'm taking that to mean the things you your mind pays attention to. And that is so important. If you surround yourself with negative people, you're gonna, it's gonna wear off on you. You really have to really, especially now, you have to be very, very particular about what you focus on. Like all the news, all the media, there's a lot, you know, sometimes you just have to shut it off. Mm -hmm. You, you actually have to, again, choose peace, joy, harmony, connection. You have to actually actively choose these things. Yes, I firmly believe that. And she does, too. She says she believes that uh, mental diets are essential. Mm -hmm. She also asks, what are your thoughts on mantras? Now, there's several different types of mantras. If you're from the yoga perspective, they're in Sanskrit, which I struggle with a little bit because I don't know Sanskrit. <laughs> I like to know what I'm I don't know um, what it means. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you hear about the people getting the Chinese cat tattoos, and like it, that doesn't mean that. That means that. Well, <laughs> yeah. I want to know what it means. Right. Um, so I don't. But then the, the mantras, like, um, I can't think of any off top, off top of my head, but, but people do use them and, and they seem to, they seem very calming and they seem to, if you just focus on them, just focus on them, focus on them. They, they do, I've used them in the dentist chair. Mm -hmm. No kidding. How did that come about? Well, um, I never, you know, no one, does anyone like going to the dentist? No, no, I really like going to the dentist. <laughs> yeah, of course, of yeah, course, Daniel. <laughs> I, think it's I like great. knowing my teeth are clean. That's what I like. I, I can't, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm waiting for, one of the things I'm waiting for most about quarantine to be fully over is I can go to the dentist again. 
Right. Wow. It just went last week. <laughs> it just opened again. Here. I'm definitely due for a cleaning. Yeah. So I was in the dentist chair and I'm like, I mean, nothing was wrong, but he was in there a while and I started to get like uh, frustrated or anxious or whatever. So I just started to doing one little match mantra. Uh, and it just sort of went, oh, I can just sort of get in the zone again. So that was lovely. So I like using mantras. That raises a, an interesting point. As an expert on heart speak, you must use it on yourself all the time. Oh, every day. Yeah. Days <laughs> not go by. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Dan? Do you use it every day? Yeah, I don't necessarily go through all of the, the steps of the process, but even just the philosophies and the, the, the way of looking at my feelings, my emotions, and how I'm engaging with them, and also being compassionate for other people as well and their emotional responses that don't necessarily groove with me like oh you don't know heart speak do you (laughs) 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 so So, yeah just being able to sort of be compassionate and also um just in my work being able to hold hold effective space for people um to step into empathy but be able to sift and sort through the feelings and allow myself to share a deeper level of empathy to be more effective in the work without allowing it to shift where I am at the core. So mm. integrative heart speak living, I'd say. <laughs> but, I, but I always know that, you know, if, if, if there was a time when I was like really in a <laughs> space, then I, I can pop to where are my heart speak tools. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and go through it. Yeah. Funny too, as you were describing that, I was realizing, and this is probably true for other people too. I mean, Anne, you can you can tell us from your experience, but I think maybe I was unconsciously doing this at times anyway, without realizing what I was doing. I mean, Absolutely. Any time that I just kind of would get into, I, I was angry about something, I, so I'd like you know relive it again and just and just kind of feel it again. I, I was doing that without realizing what I was doing. Nice. And then what did you do at the end? Did you pivot? Probably. Yeah. I mean, I have to think about particular. It, ha- it happens naturally. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, actually, well, the incident that I was thinking of when you asked us to do it, I, I remember I skipped past two others and went to this one, and I stuck with that one. And I can remember now what happened at that incident. I did express a lot of anger toward this person who was really just <laughs> doing a number on me, got out of there as fast as I could. And as I'm getting away, I'm going through the process of reliving it again and getting, I'm on a walking path on a nature path. And mm-hmm. as I was getting away from my, all that was alone was also making me feel more relaxed. And then within about 10 seconds, somebody was passing me the other way and I instantly clicked in the mode. Hey, how you doing? And it was all gone. <laughs> the whole pivot was done. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I yeah, that I getting did reheated. I I did it without realizing what I was doing, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess what you're saying is this is actually a, a it's a natural process that we have evolved throughout the millennia. Kind of did it half accidentally, but it was it was sort of there from a human race perspective and we just kind of drew upon it without realizing we were drawing upon yeah in my perfect world in my in my vision of the future we won't need heart speak actually what do you mean by that we won't have any stuck emotions or triggers or anything um to actually clear or process Mm. i mean i see kids doing it now kids are automatically pivoting kids are automatically feeling their feelings and then Pivoting. It's really cool. And um, I think that kids are more emotionally intelligent than. Uh, yes. Uh, Very true. <laughs> more in tune, though, because they're, they're functioning with less an- analytics and more pure pure emotion, though. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They live in the have all the thinking getting in the way. Like, yes. ah, get into it. <laughs> Um, and add on the fact that so many people are doing work on themselves these days. I mean, not the whole population necessarily, but certainly people in our circles are working on themselves, raising their own vibrations, as we like to call it. And in the process of doing that, 
it's going to get easier. I mean, that's something I've noticed from day one of trying to be a, an LOA conscious creator is that every single day that I worked on it, it got easier and easier to just snap back. So, I mean, it's really unusual for me to fall down into the, the really low vibrational spaces. And when I do, I, I'm, I, it's so outside of my experience now, my experience that I have built for myself is so much along the line of, of the feel good stuff. First of all, I don't want to stay there very long. I want to get out as soon as possible. Like we're talking microseconds, you know, and then <laughs> once I'm out, it's like, oh, well, okay. That was something I don't want next. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it, you're right. There's not a whole lot of time. Yeah. Right. Next class. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, there's not a whole lot of time to, to really focus when you're, when you're high vibe like that. And if that's where our planet is going, and I think it is, you're right. That's exactly what's going to happen. Heart speak is not. I don't think it's ever going to disappear. I think we're going to need it on some level because we are, in uh, the words of many LOA teachers, we we live in contrast. We live in a, a world of contrast where, where there are things we like and there are other things we don't like, and we have the opportunity at any given time to choose what we're going to pay attention to. And as time goes on and we become more skilled at focusing our attention where we want, it's not like the stuff that we don't want will go away. It'll all still be around just won't be spending as much time on it and it'll 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 almost be like this heart speak approach will be so ingrained that we'll still be using it we just won't think about it Mm -hmm. that's my Mm -hmm. take on it Mm -hmm. you're shaking your head up and down so i think i've hit a nerve (laughs) yeah definitely i mean I, i i do feel that's where we're headed as well i mean you know there's always going to be little oh have you noticed this have you noticed what the, every time you you say, oh, I got that now. Like, I know you said I worked on that and I got that now. Whenever I say that, boom, the universe challenges me, tests me. So you really think you got that now? <laughs> I, I used to be plagued with that one, so I decided to break that agreement because it wasn't really serving me. <laughs> like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like that small print that I wrote. So I'm going to just take yeah. that small print out. And just be okay with celebrating, celebrating humbly. Yeah, thank you, thank you for helping me to get that. I get it. With your <laughs> help, <laughs> here's my scorecard. I don't need a refill. <laughs> Funny you should mention a scorecard because um, talking about how when you get into the higher vibration and you end up living there more often it's easier to, to bounce out of those low vibration spaces. Um, just earlier today, Louise and I had an experience with that because um, due to COVID, our gardening season got started late. We normally start April 1st and we started June 1st. So as you can imagine, we have a whole bunch of customers who are saying, when are you coming out to our house? We, why couldn't you do it before? It doesn't require mass to do gardening and all this other stuff. You know, so we're dealing with a lot of customers who are quite anxious. And on top of that, we're dealing with staff issues because one of our staff members uh, was injured over the winter and he can only work half hours and another one um, she's getting up there in years. She wants to cut down on her hours and, and another person didn't come back at all. So, you know, we've got the ads out and we're trying to fill it and so forth. And we hadn't really gotten who we wanted. Louise came to me at about oh, one o'clock, something like that, sat down. And whenever she sits down in front of me, I know, okay, this is serious. So she sat down in front of me and she says, we need more help right now. I mean, I know we got the ads out there, but we need more help. And so long and short of it was we both agreed, okay, let's do our LOA thing. Let's just put the energy out there. Oh my God. One phone call after the other from that point until 15 minutes before I did the show. I mean, the universe just went, boom, here you go. (laughs) (laughs) It was nuts. (laughs) So it just goes to show what happens when you get the vibe up. Oh, you better watch out what you're asking for because it's going to come in spades. (laughs) It just (laughs) comes and comes and comes. Holy cow. I think it all comes down to, um, like when I look at the flow funnel stuff, it all comes down to what you've got the capacity for emotionally, mm. what you've got the capacity for in terms of your beliefs, and what you've got the capacity for in terms of your physical environment. So I can be all good and groovy. I could have done my heart speak and really opened up to the emotional frequency of what I want. I can believe it, but if I'm just at home eating Cheetos and watching Netflix, then I'm not going to meet the love of my life, right? Mm. That's just It's just not going to happen if I'm not physically doing that so i think 
having the capacity to open up to that bandwidth and having opportunities like you've had where you can see what happens when that bandwidth has been opened up, the blessings that come in, then you can start to, oh, hang on a minute. Well, I've had that, this physical experience that when I step into this, when I do open up along all levels and I'm very clear and, and, and clean on that, then it can literally happen right away. And I, I think abundance is our natural state. And so that abundant overflow of blessing is what will naturally happen unless we, in our own small print, say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to check the box with the bountiful. I'm going to have some lack and some stress, right? <laughs> right, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Linda, that's a great feeling. That it feeling a great of feeling. It, it's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. Daniel did a, a really great piece. He did, it was almost just off the cuff the other day on blueprints, as he calls them, stuff that goes beyond you know, previous lives and, uh, uh, you know, stuff outside of our direct immediate life experience. Does HeartSpeak address that? Indirectly it does um, because we, we just follow, we'll use the muscle test and we follow the muscle test to where um, the, we call it the point of formation where we go, where do we, ha where we do, where do we need to go to clear this? this fear or whatever. And um, sometimes it does go preconception, we call it, before birth, you know? And if people's reality is that they were driving, you know, a different body, then um, that's where we go. So we don't, I don't put my beliefs on someone else in that regard, but it can definitely impact um, traits that have come through yeah it seems to be like a generational thing or a, or an ancestral thing or um seem to come from nowhere what you know you know it, and oftentimes it is it is really effective when especially when it goes when that when we have to clear it preconception it's really quite a profound experience for the patient for the client yeah. what's your what's your take on um I, I don't know how to describe it other than to say it's a, it's a human race uh, communication. And actually, I think it goes beyond humans. It's all life forms. Uh, there, there are a lot of different theories that kind of tie into how, how do large groups of people collectively share information without knowing each other and so forth? And how is it that animals are able to do it? How is it that I think it's rhesus monkeys are able to communicate, you know, on opposite sides of the planet, sharing the same information about what just happened five seconds ago. You know, I, I, I find that to be an interesting, kind of a fascinating yeah. topic. I'm wondering, how does the heart speak tie into that, do you think? I have a theory about that. I think that animals and we communicate through feelings. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes when I'm, when I'm thinking of something or, or, cause I have a, a puppy and, um, I'll be thinking, oh, you know, I, I, we should go out for a walk now. That's in my head. And she'll go, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I think that, you know, her, you know, herds of cattle, you know, how do they know? They just, they feel each other. The birds that fly in a, in a cloud, mm -hmm. they must feel each other. So there's no, I think it's through energy. And I think feelings are energy. And we share that. And in, you know, how many times have we thought of someone, you know, and then they'll pop up, they'll message us or bring us. Right. Yep. That's a great way to describe it. I, mean, I personally think that words and actions are just a, a medium of communication for energy. Yes. It's just, it's just a way that we understand the treatment that's going on. Um, and I talk about this in my workshops when I say, when I talk about like the difference between being grateful gratitude and, and, and saying thank you yeah and even when you look at i hate you guys <laughs> obviously there's no hate there the words right. don't there's a disconnect between the words i love you i really do with all of my heart <laughs> like <laughs> yeah there's a disconnect uh -huh. whereas it you know if i don't even say anything i'm just like <laughs> right it's it's i don't know i agree anyway 
words and all of that stuff. I think we just got more primitive over time as we've gotten older. Right, we get caught up in all this life stuff and lose lose that connection to the true nature. Because even when you look at the spectrum of light, the, the bit that we perceive of our senses is that, and then the whole of it is all of that. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about words and actions here and the feelings are happening out right. there. When we look at our being, the energetic body extends out way beyond the physical and then connects and merges in with with reality as a whole. Yeah. And that's the fullness of our being. And that's where the communication is really happening. Yeah. And um, there's a subtlety there that we can tap into deliberately. Um, and it, I think tools like HeartSpeak enable us to relearn that language that we truly speak both with ourselves and with others and with the universe as a whole. Yes. I often challenge people to not put words to feelings because it has a specific meaning to to someone. So, but if you say I'm scared, but there's this whole big other thing, yeah, you could be scared, but there's a lot more to it than that. So instead of labeling it, sometimes I just ask people to feel it, mm -hmm. whatever it is. If you just answer for me a question that I've had in the back of my mind for some time, which is, how long am I going to do this podcast? Because my intention is really to do it probably for the rest of my life. But you just pointed out to me that I'll probably do it until we get to the point where we really don't need the words anymore. And then it'll just be an energy. <laughs> In which case, instead of calling it a podcast, it'll be an intercast. <laughs> <laughs> an intercast. <laughs> We're just going to sit here. Yeah, we'll just, we'll zone. <laughs> And every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'd be a lot of coughing, a lot of uh, <clears throat> but not a whole yeah. lot of words. <laughs> Hey, before we uh, run out of time, I want to make sure we do our promotional announcements. Included, in, of course, is the <laughs> fact that I know I keep saying this. We've been saying it for a few weeks now, but I really, really am close to launching this hand. I'm, I'm like down to the last touches here. So that's going to be coming out in the next few days. So I can't quite say to get the app from the Google Play Store or from the Apple App Store. But if you're listening to this down the line, yeah, you can do that. By now, you'll, <laughs> by that point, yes, you'll be able to get it. In the meantime, though, for those of you who are listening to this fresh off the uh, recording studio, I want you to make sure that you subscribe the old-fashioned way to LOA Today. And then you'll be right on top of things when we make the announcement that the app is available, that you can listen to the podcast that way so become a subscriber simple to do um, it's going to be even simpler once the app is available but even right now all you have to do is go to the home page lawaytoday.net and you will find instructions on how to do it at the top of the page that's also where you'll find how to do the app too later on um, on top of that also you want to make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend as our friend Alex likes to said you want to make sure this gets passed around more and more people finding out about their daily dose of happy and and you get to check us out on youtube because we do this live streaming to youtube like we're doing today and that's where our wonderful alex king comes in to tell us exactly how to do it okay so what you want to do is uh go to youtube search loa today podcast videos and once you see our smiling faces you click down below to the red subscribe button next to the red subscribe button there's a little silver bell click that little silver bell so you will always be notified when we are live doesn't she do that well, Ann? I mean, isn't that great? She, she could be on like a leading television network as far as I'm concerned. You know? yeah. I mean, speak it into existence, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> That's what we're doing, right? That's what we're doing. We're helping you get there. You're going to be there. It's, it's Just a matter of time. time. That's yeah. it. So, good stuff. Well, hey, this has been great. Thank you for introducing us to HeartSpeak. Thank you for giving us a demonstration, teaching us how to go about doing it. I imagine there are resources that we can draw upon to learn how to do this even more, probably books and websites and so forth. So tell us about that. How do they find out more about uh, Dr. Ann Jensen and about HeartSpeak? Yes, you can go to our HeartSpeak.com website. Um, we're in the middle of revamping it. So <clears throat> hopefully by the end of the month, it will be new but it's it's there there's lots of information yeah. about heart speak what's yeah. going on um we have more of course online courses we have video yeah. courses we have meetups that we can we do clearings it's uh anyone can come on and get free 
Yeah. Okay. And um, Daniel, since you brought the, the Dr. Ann to us, what, yeah, I'm going to leave the uh, the final closing thought to you. So what's the takeaway for today's show? No, no pressure, no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. Drum roll, please. <laughs> no press, no press. No. <laughs> Well, now you just ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> I think feelings are the way that we connect to energy, and energy is what we really are. So get to know your feelings and get to know yourself. I like those final words. He always breaks it down so simply. Mm-hmm. See, I think he should become your spokesman, Anne, because he does it so well. He already is my spokesman in some ways. That's true, yeah. That's how she got here. (laughs) Good point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I'm I'm a fan fan of good stuff and people out there doing good good things to help people live more abundant, joyful, purpose driven lives. And for me, Dr. Anne is just uh, a true embodiment of that. Mm -hmm. And I love it dearly. And as wonderful as this has been, the pattern continues because we've got another couple of guests coming in, including one. This Thursday, right? I mean, I think we confirmed Thursday. You want to give people a clue as to who's coming on Thursday? Is it um, DS? I think it's the other one. Yeah. That one. (laughs) (laughs) Now, for those of you who are not yet high vibe enough to pick it up without the (laughs) the translation... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh, Dr. Anne's taken us into into our emotions, into our feelings, and uh, uh, Paul Reed's going to take us into the mind and NLP and how we can start using, communicating with our mind more effectively and uh, tapping into our daily dose of happy that Ooh, way too. Okay, so good stuff. I like the transition. Yeah, yeah. And that was completely, that was LOA planned, the universe nice. planned. One. Yeah. yeah. Like we just that. let it fall into place. Yes. Mm-hmm. It worked great. Divinely ordered. <laughs> so great. Thank you once again, Dr. Ann Jensen. We really appreciate you taking the time, teaching us stuff, giving us a demonstration. So thank you for coming by. We appreciate it. We're going to have to have you back again sometime too. So, you know, kind of mark it on your calendar at some point. Okay. okay. Thank you. Love to have you. Thank you guys. As usual, you guys were, you, you, you fulfilled your duty. You were your comedic selves. You brought the energy up. So well done to both of you. And of course, Daniel brings in everything else that goes along with it. Dan, Daniel's like a jack of all trades. He just has all of it going at the same time. So. <laughs> Dan of all trades. Dan of all trades. Get my name right. <laughs> when he's doing his dangents, I mean, they're great. Alex and I basically are trying to keep up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, live streamers. And especially thank you to all of our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.